Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I have avoided talking about Nikita Dragon on my channel for a while now. And it's not because she hasn't done anything too problematic in the past. You know, she's definitely had her fair share of uh, scandals, we'll call it. But last week she uploaded a music video onto her Instagram where she managed to piss off a lot of different people. In today's video, you're going to see why. I post new videos every week here on my channel. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that right now. I'll wait for you. Go ahead, go ahead. Are you done? Thank you very much. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all those different places. And yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into today's video. So this whole situation started back last week when Nikita Dragon started switching all of her different profile pictures on Instagram, Twitter. I don't know if she did YouTube. I think it was mostly just Instagram and Twitter. She changed them to a picture of a trans woman named Venus Extravaganza. Extravaganza, I'm done. Venus Extravaganza. Venus was a trans woman who was actually very tragically murdered back in 1988. To be honest, I don't really know what Nikita was trying to do with like the whole switching her profile pictures and everything like that. At least in my opinion, it's just like kind of random. It's kind of a random case. A lot of people were actually upset about Nikita using Venus Extravaganza's face, as well as the faces of other trans women who have passed away like Marsha P. Johnson and Sophie. A lot of people understandably thought was very disrespectful and quote unquote, fucking weird. It's bad enough that Nikita used their faces to promote her song or whatever, but then to put the dick like over their face too, it's just, it's just like a little bit fucking weird, I guess. She then posted a picture to Twitter where she was basically like fully naked, had tape over her genitals and the photo had the caption tucked. And then she followed it up by tweeting, I am finally free or finally free or I'm free or something like that. Saying that her exposing that she has not had bottom surgery is, you know, freeing to her. Which like, don't get me wrong, I definitely would understand how that could be a freeing thing. But like the only reason that people think that she's had bottom surgery is because that's what she's been saying for years. The FFS, honey, oh, before true. the Before TTT, everything, before, before I had the lips. FRS. Oh my God, before it all. Maybe it's just me, but lying about having bottom surgery kind of gives me that same bad feeling as when people lie about like not having plastic surgery. So if somebody has like their body done and they say, oh no, I just like work out. I just do this ab exercise and I just, you know, use this diet supplement. To me, it kind of has those same negative impacts. After the Twitter photos and all that kind of stuff, she finally dropped a music video. I say finally, as if we've all been waiting for it or something like that. I'm not going to play the music video, obviously, because I don't know if it's copyrighted. I don't, I don't know the whole situation with it. I'm sure you can find it somewhere online though. Me giving her a casual plug. You're welcome, girl. In this music video, she's including photos and videos of tons of people, tons of men, along with the line, come get your boyfriend because he's on my page talking. She talks about her ex-boyfriend, Michael Yerger. If you know Nikita, I'm sure that you've heard of this whole fake boyfriend situation, whatever, whatever. I don't know what went on. The only people that really know what went on are Nikita and Michael, whatever. This is so silly. Like this is just like a drama part that I don't care about, but Michael has come out many times and been like, I'm like that, that didn't happen. Like, shh, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone, which is obviously not cool, but I mean, that's his prerogative, I guess. It is possible that they were together and it's like a whole trans thing, you know, he doesn't want people to know that they hooked up because she's trans. But like, damn, come on, this was like literally two years ago now, like, I don't even know. It was a long time ago though. Putting him in your music video and trying to expose him for the 50th time, it's not this righteous message for trans people that Nikita thinks it is. She literally said, it's cool to be DL, just don't lie, you know, whatever, just don't lie about it. Then goes on to expose multiple other men that have allegedly, you know, tried to hook up with her. One of the men being Tyga, like a, the very famous rapper Tyga. He actually tweeted this out denying it and like, girl, I don't, know if it's real, if it's not. It probably is. Like we've all heard the rumors about Tyga. But what are you trying to do? What are you trying to prove? How many trans women have come out and said that, you know, they hooked up with Tyga and like nothing happened? To me, the only thing that this does is perpetuates that it's like this weird thing that is something to gasp over. What do they call it? Like a, this like gotcha moment, which is obviously not what we want. We want it to just be like a normal, a normal thing. I will say that I totally understand how frustrating it is that a lot of men are not willing to love you in public, but they're so willing to, you know, be with you in private. But coming out and exposing them and putting them in your music video when they literally did nothing to you, it's, it's like, it's not the way to win. Not to say that your ex didn't do anything to you. Like, I, I don't, I don't know what he did to you, girl, but like the other people, they all, they all fucked you over, girl. I know for a fact they did not because Mr. Harry Jowsey went on that podcast or whatever, proudly admitting that you guys hooked up and was like, totally fine with everybody knowing, you know, he's being the perfect example of what you want straight men to act like, but Nikita would rather go behind his back and try to make it into, again, this gotcha moment 
instead of showing the world like, hey, this is what a strong, confident man does when he likes a trans woman. Okay, remember Nikita Dragon's music video slash expose? She included this of Harry Jowsey. He was asked about this on the BFFs pod, and here's what he said. I feel like it doesn't really matter, because like for me, like it's just like hooking out with another girl. Because I honestly see like trans women as, as women. Did you know that you were going to be in it? No, I was annoyed because I'm, I'm pretty sure we took a selfie. I'm pretty sure there was a selfie the morning after. Like, why didn't you get me when I didn't look like a fucking bean? I don't see it as a big deal. And I feel like I'm very blessed with my friends and my family that, like, everyone's open-minded and just loves people for who they are. I told, I told all my friends the next day, I was like, yeah, shit was crazy. If your goal is truly to show that trans women are desirable to straight cisgender men, or whatever you were trying to do, why not to have a conversation or do something with this famous, attractive man that is being the perfect example of how you want men to treat you? I don't get it. Not enough clout? In the next part of the video, it says you wearing shit that I already wore, and it includes pictures of other women wearing outfits that are similar to outfits that Nikita has worn. I'm apparently trying to prove that trans women are the blueprint and fashion and trends copy what trans women, specifically black trans women, started. And I've heard this said a lot, not just from trans women, but you know, from a bunch of different communities that, you know, we started these trends and we started these trends and blah, blah, blah. It just gives me very much like, that he's copying me, she's copying me, they're copying me, like very much just like second grade vibes. And I'm not talking about cultural appropriation. That's a different topic. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about stupid shit like, you're copying my dress. Just take it as a compliment and move on, sister girl. A perfect example of why this is so pointless and counterproductive is Asian Doll. Asian Doll is one of the girls that Nikita actually called out in her music video and she was pissed. She was real mad. Nikita will get dragged by their bald head. What do they call boys that pick on girls? Bullies? I don't want to read it because it is really, really mean and transphobic, just obviously. I never support misgendering anybody or, you know, body shaming anybody, anything like that obviously ever, period. Deep down there though, there is a point to be made. Even Akita has admitted herself that black women have started at least some of the trends that she herself has participated in. So I can definitely understand why Asian Doll, who is also black, I know the name Asian Doll can be a little bit confusing, but I believe she is also black and Asian. I can understand why she would be frustrated with Nikita for, well, one, calling her out for no reason. Like it was just very uncalled for, but also for being a hypocrite, or in my opinion, worse than a hypocrite because Asian Doll was just, you know, copying dresses. Nikita was being a full on culture vulture. They're different. Miss Nikita though, she was not backing down. She was not, not giving in. This statement was to show that trans women set the trends for cisgender females, yet never get the credit. This was not meant to be shady. You just happened to be an example. Black trans women and black gay people gave the culture. And then finally we have Trans women are the most beautiful creatures to walk the earth. I've never seen a cisgender female even come close to looking how my sisters look. Girly. Uh, I really wanted to give her like the benefit of the doubt, you know? But this is just too much to try to play it off as some sort of like activism or something. All these claims of trans women are the most beautiful and we're better than you isn't doing anything but make cisgender women think that trans women are trying to compete with them, which maybe Nikita is, but I am not. And I don't think that most transgender women are trying to compete with cisgender women. We're just trying to, you know, live life. We have enough problems with people thinking that we, you know, think that we are the exact same as cisgender people and we don't think that we're any different. We don't need to start going around saying that we're better than everybody. Nobody's better than anybody, except for me, duh. Just kidding. <laughs> she even literally says explicitly, I'm winning, and puts up a screenshot of her Instagram likes as if that's, you know, what determines who's winning in life. Her Instagram likes compared to the amount of Instagram likes that other people get, like Sweetie, Jeffree Star, James Charles. This whole competition thing, whatever, whatever, not only is it not a good look, but like it or not, trans people need cisgender allies to progress and to really make impactful change in this world. And competing with them and saying that we're better than them is not the way to keep those allies. There is more, it just keeps getting worse and worse. She really just tried to get as many problematic things jam-packed into this video as possible. After that, she shows clips of a bunch of different trans women, the first of which being Caitlyn Jenner. Interesting choice. And the last of which being, again, Venus Extravaganza. Again, using somebody who has passed away for that little clout grab. And finally, the video ends, finally, with the words, Nikita Dragon, the first trans pop star. Literally a second ago, she was talking about how trans women created the trends and we need to pay respect to the people that have come before us, blah, blah, blah. Then claims that she's the first ever trans pop star. 
even though one, she's not a pop star. Two, she used a picture of Sophie, a pop star who was passed away, to promote this exact music video. Three, she's literally been featured in Kim Petras' music videos, who is literally one of the most well-known trans pop stars ever. It's like, sister girl, practice what you preach. If you're gonna say uplift trans women, uplift all trans women that have come before you. Not just ignore them so you can have a catchy title for yourself. At this point, at least to me, it's pretty clear that this was not some attempt to empower trans women everywhere or anything like that, since the only trans women that are being empowered are trans women that she does not see as being in her way, but okay, poor little Kim Petras and poor little Sophie, damn. So what was the point? To sell makeup, duh. Come on, that one was predictable. Okay, everyone, that is pretty much it for this drama. After this, Nikita Dragon just logged offline. She said, okay, I'm done, bye. She literally said, it was all a joke. The song's never dropping. It was just a joke. It was just a gag, haha. -ha. I think she actually deleted the video off of her Instagram. Um, but it's still on Twitter, so I don't know what that's all about. But yeah, what do you guys think about this music video? I keep calling it a music video. I don't know if it's actually technically a music video, but I mean, close enough, right? Leave a comment down below telling me what you guys think. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Make sure to subscribe. Like I said, I post videos every single week on my channel. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to go. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.